Good morning. Welcome to another Garden Side Chat. Um, thanks for joining me out in the garden this morning. My name's Carrie. You are looking at a pest that does a fair amount of damage to crops that are in the brassica family. So this is a cabbage worm. It's a little green caterpillar um, that turns into a really kind of like cute white moth that you generally see fluttering around your garden almost all season. But it does a pretty substantial amount of damage on kale, collards, cabbage, um, broccoli, the list goes on and on. So today for our garden side chat, we're going to talk about pest management on brass cut crops. So I'm going to flip this leaf over and let's look at the damage that these caterpillars do. So this is some dino kale, also called Toscano kale. It's got a lot of different names, Lacinato. Anyway, uh, you can see, you know, it's pretty like devastated. Um, so the caterpillar, this is just one of the caterpillars that eats holes in the leaves, the cabbage worm. But you can see uh, the caterpillars are what we call leaf chewers. So they chew holes in leaves or pretty much like eat most of the the veins except for the main stem they'll pretty much decimate a leaf like you can see here there's almost no leaf left um, obvious ways to find the damage is just by looking at your plant obviously you can see where there's holes uh, where leaves are missing but another um, indicator is what we call frass so this is frass right here and that's cabbage worm poop or some other caterpillar poop i think i've got at least two different types of caterpillars on these. Um, so that's like their little like green poop from eating all of my um, all of my kale leaves. So as you see here, here's another cabbage worm. It's kind of like pooping as we speak. Uh, so you can see how uh, it's kind of hard to like find the cabbage worms because they have really good camouflage. Uh, they really match the color of the leaf perfectly. So that's why you use the frass and the leaf damage to identify what plants they're probably on to kind of limit your search. In my experience, most caterpillars are um, kind of in the middle of the plant. So you can kind of see where my fingers point. They'll be like on like veins and stuff kind of in the middle, which is a little more protected um, from birds and things because that's kind of what they're looking out for from being eaten by birds, or um, as in the case of the two we've seen, on the underside of the leaf. So this is the underside of the leaf. It's kind of bent in a weird way, but normally the leaf would be kind of bent this way, and the leaf would protect the caterpillar a little bit from the caterpillar's natural predators, which are birds, uh, parasitic wasps, and other uh, predators. So, in my experience in Colombia, we have three main caterpillar pests for kale, collards, um, you know, broccoli, that, that kind of like leafy greens family. We have cabbage worm, which we've talked about. We have cabbage looper, which looks a lot like the cabbage worm, except it has a different locomotion. Um, I wish I couldn't find one today, but... Uh, the loopers kind of do like the inchworm thing. They kind of do this, whereas uh, the cabbage worm just kind of like crawls like a normal caterpillar. And then we have a fall armyworm, which I don't see on uh, my plants at all, which is kind of a good thing. But the fall armyworm is kind of a gray, black, yellow, red, kind of stripy caterpillar. And when you get one, you get tens, you get hundreds. They, that's why they're called army worms. They come in a horde and will, without exaggeration, pretty much in a night, defoliate your, your leafy greens plants. So they're called fall army worms. So we're getting to that time in the gardening season where those will start becoming prevalent. So uh, check the undersides of your leaves to make sure that you don't have the fall army worm or really any caterpillar. Um, so those are the three yeah, those three caterpillar pests. Um, hopefully you can see this other pest. It's called a flea beetle. 
And it's actually right next to some, some leaf damage, but not leaf damage that the flea beetle itself does. Uh, so if we pan over here, actually, there's a better shot with some young red Russian kale. So here's a flea beetle. Hopefully you can see it. Um, and then down here is the flea beetle damage. So it's what we call little shotgun holes. So real tiny holes um, that sometimes, you know, the plant... If it's not too bad, the plant will just continue on, but sometimes the shotgun holes can be so bad that the plant just kind of like drops that leaf. Like I'm going to pluck this one off. So that's a, that's a pretty bad leaf. That's from the flea beetle, which is another pretty severe pest of brassica plants. Um, I have found that they're worse for young plants rather than kind of older, more mature plants, but it's definitely something to, you know, to look out for. Um, something that we've also experienced, um, damaging our brassica plants that I don't see evidence of today, which is good, are groundhogs and like mammals. Groundhogs will just eat the whole plant. Um, and just like the fall armyworm, you'll come out, you'll go to bed one night and the plant looks nice and big and you come out the next morning, the plant's pretty much eaten. So that's a groundhog damage, um, as well. Um, you know, it's interesting to me that that brassica, like leafy greens from the brassica family, are so heavily predated upon. Uh, oftentimes, if someone doesn't like uh, leafy greens, they say it's because they're so tough and everything. But for whatever reason, insects love this family. Insects, pests love this family. So there's a lot to be looking out for. Um, we, I don't see any damage at the moment from this, but there's also in the fall something called a harlequin bug that will, that's a sap sucker, so it will drink the juices out of the leaves. It's got a little proboscis that just like sucks the fluids out of the plant and causes damage, and those are really rough. Those are very uh, bright, exotic looking bugs that are a mix of orange and black and white, so they're impossible to miss. So as a gardener, what are you supposed to do to keep these plants safe? So, I mean, as you can see, uh, you can see my gardening philosophy on full display here, which is, um, a, you know, I guess I have too much going on to like care that a good chunk of my brassica leaves are being eaten by caterpillars at the moment. But um, I, you know, I would still eat this leaf. I'm not deterred by that at all. So, you know, on a personal um, gardening philosophy, I'm not selling any of this, so like I'm okay with some damage that provides insects and food for other things in the food web, which as a, you know, a gardener who tries to practice sustainable practices, it's an important thing to keep insects around for the benefit of the plants, but also the benefit of the other animals in the ecosystem. So anyway, um, another thing I do other than just like, you know, being okay with it, which is not, uh, you know, necessarily maybe the greatest, it's doing nothing. It's doing, doing nothing. <laughs> so things you can do are one, sometimes I come out and like pluck the biggest ones, the biggest caterpillars off. So we have chickens, so you can feed them to the chickens. If you have chickens, chickens love them. You can also squish them. Uh, you can also put them in a bucket of soapy water and they'll drown. So pulling them off the plant and mechanically killing them is one way. If the infestation is just too great for that or you're just unable, you know, your schedule doesn't allow you to keep up with it, another thing you can get is something called BT, which is uh, Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a, a naturally occurring bacteria in our ecosystem. And uh, you can apply it to your plants. We apply it in kind of like a, like a granule that we dilute in water. And then you spray it on your plants and the bacteria um, kills the caterpillar. So the caterpillars eat the leaf with the BT on it and then the bacteria kills the caterpillar. But it's okay for humans to ingest it. It's safe for other insects and things like that. So that's, um, that's a really foolproof way to keep caterpillars, especially off of your leafy greens. Won't do anything for the flea beetles, won't do anything for the groundhogs, the harlequin bugs, won't do anything for those pests, but uh, caterpillars, which are a pretty serious pest of brassicas, uh, it will keep those in check. 
sometimes I think that BT might not be the most accessible for thing for gardeners, like back, backyard gardeners. But if you look online, you'll probably be able to find it and be able to order it from some store online. But it's BT, just the two letters, BT. Um, as far as flea beetles go, something that I use a lot when the plants are young is diatomaceous earth, which is a fossilized uh, diatom. You know, it's a it's an algae that has a cell structure that's like glass, and so what it does is it cuts the exoskeleton of the beetles and it kills them. So I sprinkle it's a little white powder. I sprinkle it over my young kale plants, and that keeps the the flea beetles in check. Now I have done it with these young. Um, red Russian kales and obviously there's still some damage so it's not a perfect fix but it it keeps the plants going until they're big enough that they can kind of grow leaves that are tough enough that the flea beetles don't want to eat. Um, another thing that we practice often I don't have an example of in my garden but at work we practice often and that you could um, do very easily at your home is physical exclusion so uh, putting some PVC pipes in the ground and laying a kind of a fabric like a tool type fabric over it um, that keeps the butterflies or the moths out from laying their their eggs which will turn into cat caterpillars that will eat your brassica greens that can keep the flea beetles out if you time it right that can keep groundhogs from getting to your your plants and that can also keep harlequin bugs from flying in and landing on your plants so that physical netting uh, that physical like exclusion in the netting is a really good way to keep these pests off your plants without spraying anything, without really doing anything. Like it doesn't take you any time. Um, so that's a really, really great trick. Uh, we keep for greens, we keep them on all year and just take it off to harvest and then put it right back on. With the netting, you want to make sure it's weighted down. So there's no, like when it, when it's windy, there's no like flapping in the wind so that butterflies and moths and stuff and other flying insects can fly into those holes uh you so you that's like the only trick that you want to make sure it's it's weighed down properly um so yeah don't be deterred that you know your home garden brassica leafy greens might start getting some holes, might start getting some damage from pests. It's a very common uh, experience among gardeners that, that this is one of the plants that they really like to attack, but they're still edible. It's providing food for the rest of like your garden's ecosystem, which is good. Um, and there are several different ways that you can address it. And you can, if you catch it early, which is where coming out to your garden every day and monitoring your plants comes in, if you catch it early, you can either get BT or the netting or instigate some sort of um, practice that will keep them in check without losing any of your vegetable crop. So just come out and check your plants every day and monitor their damage, their success, what's going on, and that is the key to keeping your plants happy and healthy, or mostly healthy, all season long. All right. If you have any other questions about pests on the brass, brassica leafy greens or any other garden pests that are affecting uh, your plants, there's a lot right now out and, and bumping, please let us know. Contact us, and we'd love to help support you in your own gardening efforts. So... Until next time, take care.